All right, I'm gonna scratch my head. Scratching your head doesn't make it work any better. It only loosens unsightly dandruff. Well, pardon fucking me. Anyway. Hi, I'm the Space Quest Historian, and welcome back to Space Quest 1, the Sarian Encounter. No, not really. Um, Space Quest 4, Roger Wilco and Letai Meribes. Um, as promised, we are going to go back to that awful place, Space Quest 12, where we will do things, such as defeat a nemesis who wants us dead and has captured our son, but we don't really actually know all of that. Well, we know about the nemesis part. But anyway, that will entail us going all the way back to Space Quest 12, and the code for that, thanks to my fabulous powers of screenshotting, is... Fuck, what? There? Mm-hmm. That's it. There you go. This is the code for Space Quest 12. Yes, I am stalling, because holy Christ! Time and space bend Come under the on, vibrations Gary. of the time rip. Mr. Owens, would you prefer if I called you Mr. Owens? And stomach real or a hyperbolic uh, hyperbolic powdered toast and man? Finally, or space finally. ghost? Or any of the iconic roles you've had? Ah, he hath heeded my prayers. We are now off. Off indeed. Off the D bend. Holy shit. Okay. Enough stalling. Let's fucking do this. Fucking ominous music, holy Christ. Let's have a look around. You look out at the city you were born in decades ago. You're sure glad you weren't there when this devastation happened. You might have gotten hurt. <laughs> On the bright side, you won't have to pay those delinquent traffic tickets. Roger had a driver's license? I find that hard to believe. For some reason. Anyway. Now, this is actually after those two sequel policemen that were standing here, uh, fucked off. So we should be relatively safe, there's not gonna be any po sequel policemen just running in and shooting our asses, so we have time to look around. For instance, what was this thing they were standing near? This is the sequel police dispatch monitor. At the moment, nothing is being displayed. Okay, so they're not out looking for me? I would imagine they were. Can I actually call them up? You are unable to do anything with that now. Oh god, fucking thank you. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, it's just, hello, hello, are you looking for me? Well, guess where I am. Alright, well, one thing I did want to check before we go any further is if I could just uh, head back down to the surface and uh, scoop up the slimy you secretion. You climb up into the landing gear housing. How clever you are. Oh, thank you. And here he came. Where the fuck did he come from? But anyway, what I wanted to see was if you can actually get back down in the sewer and scoop up uh, Mr. Slime. Uh, except we already have Mr. Slime in our inventory, so I'm not really sure if um, if he's actually going to show up again. But it's worth a shot. Oh boy, here they all come. Um, <laughs> that's, that's the best piece of climbing in animation I've ever seen. Come on, Mr. Slimy Slimy. Are you still there? Good boy. Good boy! Awesome! Okay, so you can actually, if you miss the slime the first time, you can just climb down and grab a hold of him. However, we don't actually need to do that. Because, uh, you know. And right on cue, the sequel policemen arrive again to take us back to where we came from. So, um, let's uh, fast forward that jizzazz. Please try to forget that I just said jizz-ass. Back again. I wonder if the uh, sequel policeman actually turn up, if the uh, time pod is still there, or if I can... If I've just screwed myself out of something? I don't know. Let's find out. No, nope, he fucked off. Cool. Alright, because we're gonna need that time pod. We're not quite done with the time pod yet. But... One place we did not visit when we were here last was this screen over here. Now, what do you think that is? Your innate sense of curiosity makes you wish you knew the way to open this thing. Well, let's just bang on it and see what happens. None of the codes you punch in seem to have any effect on the door. Oh, I just wanted to bang on the door. Fuck you. All right, I'm gonna sniff it. It doesn't smell great, but it smells better than you. Doesn't seem to have any, um, you know... Uh, unique responses 
Why do I keep forgetting that phrase? It's very, very easy. None anyway. of the codes you punch in seem to have any effect on the door. All right. Oh, that's because we don't actually have to punch in any codes. This is what you need Mr. Slimy Slime for. Slimy Slime goes to work. Well, Did there's he just not whine? much left of the lock now. Did Mr. Slimy Slime just go... God, I hope not. He was starting to become my friend. Well, that's never a good sign when the door just shuts like behind you. All right, cool. Now, this is a funny little thing. Also, the perspective is pretty damn cool. And um, there are, in fact, things here that will kill us. And this is why we have the um, cigar, because as all spy movies will have taught you, um, cigar smoke will make laser light appear. Now, I know, we've all seen that Mythbusters episode, it's, it doesn't actually work that way, but in 1991... You slide Mythbusters the conveniently pre-moistened stogie between your lips, apply a lit match, and proceed to nearly hack up a lung. Awesome. Uh, Mythbusters did not exist in 1991, so no one was the wiser. You what cast you the old stogie to the ground. Darn it. And that smoke just lingers. Those beams are visible from now until the day everyone dies, which also happens to be today in the timeline of Space Quest. Anyway, what we have to do now is key in some fucking numbers to rotate. and It just rotates in degrees, but um, I'm no good with this shit, so I'ma just... Um, yeah, I'ma just fast forward through this if that's okay with you. That's one. That's two. Ah, so damn close. There we fucking go. Alrighty, Heidi. I sh Before we go any further, I think we should probably save our game because, of course, there are more things out to kill us on the um, other side. Here we go, the supercomputer. Now, Jesus Christ, this whole area. My God, this was... This maze of cables, ducts, pipes, and glowing panels gives the superbrain computer a sense of being alive. It was just awe-inspiring, and to this day, this, uh, this whole you... mess of... Oh, God, I just clicked past the uh, warning that something is on the way to kill you me. You hear an electronic hum approaching from behind you. That would be him. And he is not a fancy character. Well, he is a very fancy character, but he really, really wants to kill me a lot. So, you hear an electronic hum approaching from behind you. That wouldn't necessarily be him again, would it? This maze of ki- Ah, uh, that's nice. Now, why am I just walking around aimlessly here? I will tell you in just a second. Jesus Christ, those MT32 sounds have never- I've never heard this bit on an MT32. Hello, Mr. Droid. Oh, you are so fancy. It's a security droid. Jesus, even uh, Gary Owens is a bit perplexed with that. All right, what we're actually here for are these little boxes, these little panels. And they have this sort of um, square brackety thing with a dot in the middle. Cool. This maze of- Thank you. Slot A, insert terminal plug here. Yeah, you see where you we're going with this? You hear an electronic hum approaching from your right. What? Do I have a right? Is he up? Is he close to my ass? I think he might be. Yep, there he is. He's a pretty good shot, too. Now you knew he was coming, didn't you? Yeah, I did. <laughs> All right, cool. So now we actually know what plug we have to furnish the Pocket Pal portable laptop with. And that means all the way back to the time pod, all the way back to the Galaxy Galleria, and get that particular plug. And the plug is random every time you play, so that's why you have to go in and check first. Ah, now I'll bet we've all missed being here. Oh, that was a bit of a jump. 
Cool. Nice, Roger. Didn't know you were such an athlete. What we need to do is get inside this store and uh, purchase the appropriate Pocket Pal adapter. As noisy as all shit. Oh, Jesus Christ. All right. Now, you're going to hear a person describing, you know, the products in the store. However, in the resource files of Space Quest 4, uh, there are some alternate takes of all of these lines, and those lines are actually spoken by Jeff Bender, the voice of Roger Wilco, where he reads the, uh, you know, the items aloud and actually adds some extra dialogue to the whole proceedings. And those are really, really funny. And, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm going to play some of those for you uh, at the end of this little segment. But um, yeah, welcome to our automated catalog. Let us be your gateway to what's new and exciting in the world of 24th century electronics. Through the pages of our automated catalog, you will find gifts for the whole family. For dad, look in electronic gadgets for our selection of stereo components. For mom, peek into the electronic mommy for a variety of labor-saving devices and marital aids. <laughs> for sis and little brother, this browse our Technotots toy department for the latest in electronic playborgs. And the, um... Voice of that is uh, Barry T. Smith, uh, the same as the monochrome biker guy. Continue. Shopping our automated catalog oh, is as easy as snapping your digital appendages. Using your mouse or tab key, simply point to the menu item of your choice and press enter, or click the mouse button. Should you get confused, simply return to the top menu and begin anew. Whee! Thank you for choosing us for all your electronic needs. We know you'll find just what you're looking for. And if you don't, we're wrong and you should look somewhere else. <laughs> also, um, that's a sort of time process. Barry, who's reading this, and sometimes it just goes a little haywire. You know, you can, uh, like, uh, speed up or slow down um, voice and uh, audio without having, you know, time warp it without having the artifacting. Yeah, that technology did not exist in 1991, so there's a lot of artifacting here, which is good because it makes them sound kind of robotic and computerized, and also I just like the line, if you don't, we're wrong, and you should look somewhere else. Limited time specials, hell yeah. These special sale items are available for a limited time only. Availability is limited to items in stock, as is only, no returns. Some items may be demo models, scratched, dented, or just not in very good shape. No warranties expressed or implied apply to these items. No refund or exchange. Cool, let's Green have it. Green Shrink Wrap 2000. <laughs> Work for a large retail software chain? Like to take the products home and diddle with them? The Re Shrink Wrap 2000 re shrink wraps any size software box. Is that game new or used? Only you'll know for sure. Keep the customers guessing. Dealers only, please. 1,033 buckazoids. <laughs> and, you, of course, you can't order any of these. Sorry, dealers only. Do a funky answering machine. For some reason, they didn't, uh, they didn't voice this. I haven't heard this in the resource audio files either. The ultimate in high-tech answering machines. Not a phone device. Carry it around with you. If someone asks you a question, the do a funky will give the correct answer. If it doesn't know the answer, it'll make a good guess. Won't discuss politics or religion. 117 buckazoids. Sold out. Actually, that's just Siri or OK Google at this point. Cheese Whiz 2, pre-programmed with over 350 varieties of cheese, Cheese Whiz 2 will tell you the precise temperature at which to serve that beautiful round of aged cheddar or that oozing slice of soft ripened brie. A must for all cheese lovers. Will not work with aerosol cheese food products. 25 pack of soys, not available as such. Sorry, not available as such. I don't know why they didn't uh, voice those two. Those are fun. Oh, because they were cut out of the original CD version, so there are no voice files for them, but apparently these were... I didn't even know those uh, were, were cut out for some reason. Anyway, the person responsible for these hilarious products is, of course, Josh Mendel. Uh, mostly, I think. I think uh, Scott Murphy may have written some of them, but uh, most of these are Josh Mendel's work. All right, let's get into the catalog. We are looking for electronic Faux gadgets. Component Swiss Army Micro Entertainment Center. Style to look like a... No, yep, no, no, not you. Dodecaphonic around sound processor. Not you either. CDGI-ROM TV. <laughs> Move over CD-ROM, CDG, CDI, and CDTV. CDGDI-ROM TV does everything the others do and more. Cool. Pocket Pal Portable Terminal. Say, is that a complete workstation in your pocket? Or are you just glad to see me? 
Now you can carry the power of a dumb terminal around with you without even creasing your jumpsuit. Includes chiclet style keyboard and dentine style mouse. 3,406 buckazoids. Now we don't need that because we've already got one, but... Pocket Pal Connector. If you're a proud owner of our ever popular Pocket Pal portable terminal, you have no doubt noticed that without the proper connector, it is virtually useless. Fortunately, at this moment, our exclusive Pocket Pal connector is on sale for just 1,999 buckazoids. Get yours now before the price goes up even further. <laughs> wow, we do have 1,099 buckazoids, right? Yeah. With great patience, you insert each and every one of the 1,999 buckazoids into the salesbot's coin receptor. Holy Christ, this thing doesn't even take a ABM. All right, we know for a fact that this is the plug we need, so we are getting this plug, thank you. Return to top menu. Now, there are a lot of super, super funny uh, gags in this uh, bit, this uh, hurts so good, uh, radio shock, whatever you want to call it. And it is funny to sit and listen to either Barry or um, uh, Roger Wilco read these aloud. Not gonna do that right now, sadly. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to wait for someone else to do that. Shut the fuck up. But I did promise you one, uh, you know, line from Roger as the Hurt So Good, uh, bot, so, uh, here it is. Dandy Recipe Beamer. Imagine the situation. Okay. The ambassador from Corona is coming for dinner. Not to my house he's not going to. And all you have handy is a can of condensed cream of O-Rat soup and a box of nano wafers. You punch the appropriate buttons on your recipe beamer and instantly we beam the perfect recipe to you. Over 18 trillion recipes collected from all over the universe just to make meal planning easier. 455 buckazoids. Estimated date of uplink, November 2803. All right, so it is, oh, look at him jiggle. It is back to the time pot and, excuse me, sir, 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 you absolute fucking weirdo, walking here. And head on back to Space Quest 12, where we will finally see the fruit of our pocket pal labor. What was it all good for? Okay, now, before we go in, let's just plug in our new Fat terminal. You the plug to the pocket pal. Awesome. That means the pocket pal is good to go. And now it's time to see if we can do this before getting shot to shit. Because those droids will not stand still. Even if you're hunched over a laptop. Here we go. Let's see. You turn the power on, but nothing happens. God damn it. Yeah, we need to plug in the fucking battery from the fucking bunny. I know. Hey, hey, dude. Here we go. You extract the portable power pellet from the back of the bunny's polyplastoid torso. Wow, did we need any more words to describe all, uh, everything that went on there? You plug the mobile power cylinder into the laptop. Now let's just review here for a second what we've gone through. We stole this pocket pal from a crashed skimmer or whatever that was. We captured the bunny with the frayed rope. We extracted the battery from the bunny. We looked at the terminal here, went all the way back, bought the correct plug, plugged that into... This is probably the most convoluted puzzle in the entire game, and what do we get out of it? It would serve no purpose. Well, you have to fucking move out of the way, Roger. That's how it works. There you go. You can actually see the uh, droids moving around, and uh, this one is uh, coming to fuck you with me. You hear an electronic hum approaching from behind you. I'm a fucking leave. You can't see me. You can't. Fuck you. Now you knew he was coming, didn't you? I forgot to save, didn't I? Why, yes, I did forget to save. Lucky fucking me. But anyway. Now it is time to evade some fucking droids. Luckily, I am an expert at this, having trained for many months during the rigorous tenure of Professor Droido Evado. Um, maybe you haven't heard of him, but he's a an legend in his field. Approaching from your left. All we do is go down here. Now that dude's gonna come out and out the other side. 
I'm gonna go down here. You can't see me because I got bulletproof legs. And we go over here into the fancy elevator tubey thing. Now this is what the professor taught me. The professor was very clear that this is exactly how we do shizzle. Ah, god damn it! Now the professor lied to me. He was coming, didn't you? Okay, so it's been a while since I played this. I didn't quite remember what I was supposed to do, but it was definitely not that. Uh, maybe I'm supposed to go down here then. I scarcely remember. Move faster! Now you knew he was coming, didn't you? I did, but I didn't believe it. Now I know you're supposed to go up here. This much is clear. That rhymes. I don't know what rhymes with you rhymes. You an electronic. Yes, yes, yes. Maybe if I go all the way over here. So... Oh, because he comes back, eh? You little cocksucker. Then I'm gonna go over here and just use the Pocket Pal portable terminal to... You attach the plug to the Pocket Pal. Thank you. To deduce where Mr. and Mrs. Dipshit are at. You're gonna come down here, right? Uh, they seem to have all fucked off somewhere. Oh, there he is. And he's gonna go over there and I'm gonna go in the tube. There we go. I just had to wait for his ass to fuck off. Now I'm gonna go up here. And around here and all the way through that central nervous computer systemy thing. Awesome. Now, I'm not safe in here, so I don't have time to dilly-dally, but who it's the- It's Roger Jr. But we don't know Keep that. Keep your hands to yourself. All right, that's fine. Ah, fucking hell! Those things are very, very painful. I forgot those guys shoot you lasers as well. hear an electronic well. hum approaching from your left. I think the droid is coming over here now, over to my left. Or is he coming over here? Because that would really, really suck. Yep, he is. You hear an electronic hum approaching from behind you. No fucking shit, eh? Yeah. Um, that sucks. You hear an electronic... You didn't see me. I'm not even here. You hear an... You hear... Are they both coming? Yeah, they fucking are. You yeah. hear an... Absolute turd bastards. Alright, this is not how this usually goes for me. <laughs> I will, however, grant you that it is largely more entertaining than watching someone beat this on the first go. You hear? You are not coming back, are you? Please, you guys, you, you can go in there. You That's hear? Fine. Oh, I'm gonna just follow you. You seem like a nice droid. You seem to know the way. Cool. God damn it! It's a little too. Now you knew he was coming. Did you? <sighs> Let's try that again. Oh, wait a minute. I think I know. I'm supposed to wait for this dude. Then go back up. Go right. You hear it. And he is gonna come up on this walkway, isn't he? No, he's just gonna pass me. All right, fine. I'm gonna go here. You can't see me. I just, I caught the you luckiest break in the world right there. Please tell me he is not coming from the opposite side of this walkway. He's not. Cool. You can just fuck right off. Alright, didn't even have to go in the elevator. Now, I know what I just did was technically cheating, but I don't care. I'm alive. You attach just gotta get that extra point there for looking at this thing. Cool. Yeah, you guys are so fucking lame. Now, what, what are they actually doing? The Pocket Pal screen displays a wealth of almost useful information. Does it really? All right, I'm gonna turn this off before I die. So I'm just gonna go in here. Now in here, I'm safe. Doesn't look like it, but I am safe in here. It's very pleasant looking. <laughs> no, it fucking isn't. Uh, you anyway. see a small keypad. And we desperately want to fiddle with the small keypad. Now the small keypad has a rather large and uncontrollably difficult uh, combination, but luckily the hint book has the solution 
And also a laser blast has etched its way over the title bar. That's interesting. Or status bar. Um, excuse me. Apparently I can't keep the... Um, <laughs> apparently I can't keep the uh, uh, time... No, uh, the uh, keypad open. Whatever. And the code as Oh, God. 69, 65, 84, 76, 69. I have the worst memory in the world. I'm not going to be able to remember that. Fuck. Yeah, I wrote it down in a notepad. <laughs> Modern technology. Ain't that fucking grand. Now, if this is hexadecimal for anything like naughty or weird, you know, like the uh, uh, SHSR means tits in Space Quest uh, 2, I have no idea. I It never actually occurred to me to check if these are hexadecimal values. I highly doubt it. But anyway, let's get on in. Dum-dum. 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 All right, saving our game here because we are going to have a little bit of fun. Now, I might want to actually go back and try these uh, fucking droids again at some point, so I'm just going to save a new one. Yes. Now, what we're supposed to do is, of course, flush the security droids. And now the security droids will bother us no longer. They've simply been erased from existence. Which is kind of cute. Now also, looky here. Probably represents some tertiary function of the supercomputer brain. Certainly nothing important. <laughs> now, pay attention to the kilobytes down here. We've got uh, 2,451 kilobytes memory free. Now watch what happens if we flush King's Quest. <laughs> Boom, motherfucker! <laughs> so that was a bit of a meaty game, eh? Um, and here's what happens if you flush Space Quest 4. The game straight up boots you to DOS, no questions asked. And this has, depending on who you're asking, this is either the funniest joke in all of computer gaming, at least Ken Allen, the composer for the game, thinks so, and I'm actually liable to agree with him. That is some really hilariously cruel shit to pull on someone. Uh, but it doesn't let you save your game first, uh, it doesn't warn you at all that it's going to do that, but then again, what the fuck did you expect? You're flushing the game you're actually playing. So, uh, that is probably, if, if we're talking meta jokes in computer games, that one is by far the best meta joke any computer game has ever pulled. Uh, sadly, the memory free thing disappeared, so there's actually no reason to flush King's Quest 10, 5, 17? I don't know. I uh, forgot. At least suit Larry's 4. You're far too busy for that now. I didn't mean to do that. Yeah, this looks like toilet material. <laughs> Might want to flush that as well. Fuck it. Oh, there we are again. This is your brain. Had this been a real brain, you would have known how to use it. Uh, it is not, in fact, our brain. This is the brain of the supercomputer. And what we're going to do now is flush it down the toilet. This will start not just a format countdown sequence, but the best piece of music in the entire game. And the format countdown is now in effect. Now, hold on, we have to go and defeat Vohal and do all sorts of nasty shit, but let's just check the pocket pal one last time. Take a good look, Roger. Hello. Remember this poor wretched soul, for he is your son. And now he tells us. Okay, so now, of all times, we actually have motivation to go and do something about that, because we could, in fact, just piss off back to the time pot. That wouldn't really solve anything, I guess, because, um, well, I don't actually know. Um, see, we could just fuck off and go down there. But, um, then our son would die. 
And uh, since he dies, he's not able to go back and rescue us. How's that, that work again? I think you actually die if you try to leave here. Let's just do that. Yep, I'ma leave. You can't stop me. I got better things to do with my time. As you leave the laser tunnel, you hear a metallic voice announce that the formatting program is beginning. Erasing all data in the supercomputer and dashing all hopes of regaining your son. That actually kills you somehow. So I guess uh, just paternal love is just supposed to drive us to actually finish the game. Alright, we can do that. Now, hardcore gamers will flush the brain and then walk out and try to get to the supercomputer uh, main thingy uh, before the, uh, uh, without getting caught by the droids. I don't think I can do that, but I'm keeping this save game just in case you want to see me fail at that. Oh, gee, I almost did it there. And thus we come to the great final confrontation-y thingy. Ah, sleeping on the job again, eh, Junior? Come on. Oh. <laughs> Hello again, Roger. It's me, your old friend, Sludge Vohal. I've taken the liberty of borrowing your son's body. I had to remove him first to make room for my mental self. His is on this disc. He's holding up a disc. Say, it's most enjoyable to be in a young, healthy body, even if it's from your bloodline. In fact, I like it so much, I think I'll keep it. I guess we'll have no use for this anymore. And he tosses the fucking disc over the edge. Now God damn it. it's time to settle things. Once and for all. You'd better be careful, though. Keep this in mind. I now have time to explain you the if rules. I die while in this body, that disc will be useless. Your son will never draw another breath. And if you don't defend yourself, you will never live to buff another helmet. Come on. Show me what you've got. After that Johnny. lengthy introduction, I almost fucking fell asleep, but okay. Now, we're supposed to wrestle this dude. We're supposed to wrestle this dude. The game just had to take some time to think about it. And basically what you're supposed to do is just click like a madman. There you go. Got you down once. Twice. I can do this. Carpal tunnel be damned. Down you go. God damn it. Don't fuck with me, Junior. Here we go. Is that the best effort you can muster? All this space hero nonsense must be getting to you. You're getting old, Roger. I, on the other hand, am enjoying the physical joys of youth. Yeah, but could you please do that in your room? There you go. Have fun with that. Get in the fucking beam. Go to your room, Junior. Alright, climbing down now to get le disc. Because we're gonna need that fucking disc. Now, there are plenty of ways to screw this up, and the timer is still going. But, let's have a look here. The label on the diskette reads, Roger Junior, Brain Tools, Stunt Flyer. <laughs> There's Stunt Flyer again. Now, there have been some comments in the uh, uh, previous episode about what the hell Stunt Flyer actually is. It is an old Sierra game. Uh, T-2750. State smart. Very good. Cool. Uh, it's an old Sierra game that was uh, legendarily quite terrible. Uh, a lot of errors and shit. Anyway, uh, we're gonna download from the disc. Disc right protected. You son of a bitch. Alright, we'll download from the beam. Thank you. And we'll upload from the disc. Yes, we would like to upload Roger. Program will hold. Download it into... Oh, we want to... Download you to disc. Downloading program to beam. I think I messed that up a bit. Well, that's just great. Now Vohal's on the loose again, disguised as your son. 
You lose three out of two. The buttons were confusing. Hey, let's try this horse shit again. Uh, we would like to download to disk. Okay, we'd like to download from Beam. We would like to... Upload it to main computer. Fuck. Oh, there you go. I think. Yeah, that made no goddamn sense, Follow but me. anyway, we won. Many things we need to talk about. You must be very confused. We're I didn't touch anything. True. Are you really my son? You do look a little like me, though not as good looking. I'm thinking they might have cut out a few lines here that weren't voiced. Looking. I'm ten times. Wait. What, what am, am I, I saying? saying? I'm no actor. This is no way to start. Yes, what Vohal said is true. I have many things to tell you, Dad. I should start at the beginning. No, you should start I speaking up. I can barely hear you over the Antino. awesome music. It's always been my home. The Xenon of today, at least up until recently, had made great strides in managing our planet's resources. That included water, minerals, even the talent of our population. We enjoyed the talent was computer generated. For so many years, we took it for granted. The creation of the first super biomech computer was the biggest success story in our history. It was awesome. When the Vohal virus was introduced and began to control the computer, a state of total chaos was created. We were unprepared for what followed as Vohal turned our technology against us. The population was quickly decimated. Some of us stayed and tried to fight. Some were captured, and some fled the planet. When now, as a kid without subtitles, I thought he said flood the planet, as in they submerged it in water. Shot effort. That was to find Second the only person in history ever to defeat Bohal. We had to go back in time to find that person. He could have done better, I'm sure. It we got there just in time. I mean, we you're a back band of rebels. Me. Why wasn't I available in this time? What happened to me? I don't understand. I'm sorry. There are some things I, I wish I could tell you, but can't. I know that's not what you want to hear. Believe me. Believe I me, the music can. is more awesome hey, than the voice acting. If you're my son, who's your mother? My wife? Where is she? Who is she? You sure Why aren't a we lip sections for a janitor? <laughs> Here we go. Our beautiful this bride is my to be. Mother and your wife. Her name was Beatrice. Beatrice Wankmeister. Or in the morning, she Joe. I'm sure. Wasn't she? What do you Ooh. mean, was quite beautiful? What are you saying? I'm so sorry. I, I shouldn't have said that. Please, I can't tell you anymore. And he never will. We will I never know the answer to that. This. I'm so confused. It doesn't matter now. I have to send you back where I found you so that history will properly reflect the events which brought us to this place in time. You won't remember much. This will seem like it was a weird, fuzzy dream. It kind of was I the entire time. The task of contacting all the surviving citizens of our planet. We have a huge task ahead of us. Rebuilding our city and our lives will not be easy, but we will do it. For Once reasons more, unknown. I have to ask you to enter the time rift. It will return you to Magmetheus in the Space Quest 4 era. Please, go now. It's time. Also, weird fuzzy dream, but he keeps all of his inventory items. Dad, I'm glad I got to see you, even if only for a few minutes. Xenon owes you a lot. Goodbye, Dad. And then he stumbles backwards through the time rip. Nah, he doesn't. He exits in a very heroic, dramatic fashion. Well, except for this bit. And... Holy Christ! That was Space Quest Four. What an awesome, awesome fucking game, and truly one of the best in the series. It's so time. So many unanswered oh. questions. The future should prove most interesting for Roger, if he can stay out of trouble long enough to reach it. We're glad you could help Roger get through it all. Thank you for playing Space Quest 4. Oh, thank you! And as the end credits roll, we say farewell to... Roger Wilco and the Time Rippers. Holy shit. Shitballs, in fact. God, I love this game. As I said, it's tied with three in my own personal top... Well, there is a top six, seven, I guess, with the VGA remake and it and Space Quest 3 and 4. Depends on what day it is, really. Depends on what the weather is, if, which one I find the best one, but... Music and sound effects by Ken Allen, and you will notice um, Rick Spurgeon in there. He is uh, the husband of the person who voiced 
Zandra, that would be Kelly Spurgeon. And oh, so many nice people who worked on this game. Additional material, that dude I keep mentioning. So, yes. And here we have, you're free to uh, freeze frame this. Neil Matz as the pickle. God, we love you. And Scott Murphy as Sludge Vohol and the Mustard. Boy, that stays on screen for quite a while, doesn't it? Yep. Oh, well, and now the uh, credits just loop. Apparently that was the uh, the only voices they wanted to credit. Anyway, yes, thank you for watching this playthrough of Space Quest 4. And, of course, we will be back next Tuesday with the next chapter in the series. Now, the next chapter takes quite a departure from Space Quest 4. Space Quest 4 has a, while comedic, very sort of cynical, very... I, I was almost about to say edgy tone to it. With Space Quest V, however, the two guys from Andromeda went their separate ways and um, through a long and complicated history, Space Quest V ended up being developed by Mark Rowe at his new place of business, which was Dynamics in Oregon. Uh, and Scott Murphy stayed behind in Oakhurst and um, uh, didn't touch Space Quest V at all. In fact, didn't even know it was in development until he saw a boxed copy of it. At least I think so. That's the story anyway. I think he might have, you know, gotten a little hint that it was uh, in development, but uh, anyway, that's going to be next, and I will tell the whole seedy, sordid history of Space Quest V, which is actually a pretty damn awesome game in its own right. Um, so, that is it. Please like, subscribe, do whatever you kids do, but do leave me a comment, because holy fuck, I love the comments. Thank you so much, and I'll see you around the Chrono Stream. In fact, Oh my god! The voice doesn't work when you're doing it on the end credit screen. Fuck it. See you around the chrono stream, guys. See you on the chrono stream, time jockey!